Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do an after-action report of the Battle of Cabre Luna, a scenario in my ongoing campaign for sharp practice. Once upon a time, somewhere in Spain. So let's get started. So, so far in our campaign, what's occurred is that the French, originally moving up to the countryside, trying to conceal themselves, decided to go to the main road. Their Dragoon patrols have spotted uh, two garrison groups of Spanish Irlanda, luckily for them, ill-disciplined, holding the town of Cabra Luna. Captain Colbert has ordered the taking of Cabra Luna. French are coming up from the south, from this area here, and the Spanish forces are already holding the town. First, here we have the French. Four groups of Voltigier in line. That's four groups of eight. Uh, I have a medium gun and its crew uh, with, commanded by a officer. That is Lieutenant Killian Sinclair. The man standing just in front of them that is Simon Barbier. He is not actually a leader in this game. Uh, the gentleman waving the sword about, that is, that is Captain René Colbert. Just to the left of him is uh, Sergeant Pierre Danin. They have a drummer and they have a doctor. You can see the doctor sitting there at the very end, right, right here. Is there. Two groups, these uh, Voltigare skirmishers here and these uh, light skirmishers there. I was out of Voltigare figures. They are commanded by Lieutenant Victor Perot, who is right there, and he's there with his sergeant. Over here, we have the Spanish. This is actually the regiment Irlanda. Game rules, these should be foreign troops. Uh, because of the scenario rules in the campaign, I'm actually treating them as militia, so I'm assuming for this game that they're just being poorly led. But that's why you'll see groups of 10 instead of groups of eight. Uh, there in the middle is uh, Liam Dunn. Uh, on the right, he is in command. Uh, he is a captain, and the left to him is a left. Uh, this left to him is a status one. Uh, the other one, status two. Yeah. The Spanish do have 10 points of force morale to the French nine. So that's going to help the Spanish a little bit. I, my assumption there is that the Spanish, because they've been pushed back out of Portugal. Maybe their morale suffered a little bit from that because that's what's going on, of course. The Anglo-Portuguese army is doing well in Portugal and it's taking positions all the way up to the border at Ciudad Rodrigo. Spanish have one deployment marker and it's right here in this uh, hacienda. And then there's two. The primary French marker is right there on the road and there is a secondary over on the edge in the fields behind the churchyard. So the first card we have is a red flag. Uh, red is going to be Spain for this game. Another red, this is another flag. It's two flags. If there's another flag, we'll have a special effect, but I guess it won't matter because nobody's done anything yet. <laughs> Tiffin, end of the turn. Uh, nobody's on the table, so nothing can happen if there were forces on the table, uh, if the Spanish had forces on the table, they could respond since they have those two flags, but they do not. Blue two. Blue two is going to be Lieutenant Victor Perot uh, in command of the uh, Ligier Voltigure skirmishers. Because these are skirmish troops, they can be up to 12 inches away from the deployment point. Deployment point is here, up to 12 inches. That's pretty good. Coming down the, the road here, next to the olives. I 
And our next card is a blue flag. And then a six. Uh, a six is one of the sergeants, so who's under command of another. So that I'm not going to activate that one. That's the extra Tiffin I was referring to. That were being used for deploying Barbier. As a single individual leader, he can be up to 18 inches away. I'm going to put him way over here. And then we pull a five. I think that is also a sergeant. No, that is uh, Killian Sinclair. That's the artillery. I'm not sure I want to place the artillery at present, so we won't. A red flag. A blue flag. Another flag. That's three flags in a row. Three flags in a row means a special event. We're going to call that moving, and we're going to call it Barbier, because he was the last one who did anything. So we roll a 2d6 on the special events. Six, seven, eight. We get eight. The ground is worse than it used. Formation not group reduces any dice roll for movement. All right, so it's going to affect his movement. That could be a problem for him. And now we have the main leader. The main leader could bring in all of his forces. They're light infantry in line. They're going to be in column. There's the main column coming in off on, on the flank behind the church. That's most of the French forces. This is going to be a rough fight because it is all of the campaign forces for the French, with the exception only of the Dragoon group, a guy in the red, not in the four. I get another flag this time, we'll have another special effect. But we did not. We got the red one. My main commander of the Spanish. I'm going to go ahead and place his guys. This is the actual outpost uh, garrison. The others are extras, the ones in the hacienda. Tiffin, it's the end of the turn. So we enter into our next turn, and the first card we pull is a red one. Uh, that's going to be the Spanish commander, and he has things to do. He's in command of the men that are in the uh, taberna. They've got skirmishing voltigares coming down the, the main road into town, and I think we're going to respond to that. We're going to be firing muskets, a total of 16 shots. Being fired, uh, they're firing, so they're going to be in the 12 to 24 range. This is long range for muskets. They're going to get two more dice because of uh, their captain. They're going to need five hits because it's first fire. This is two groups firing. Got six hits. Uh, they're going to do their saves. One, two, there's four shock. Uh, I didn't determine what side should be which, but there's two on either side, so two shock on either side of the road. So they fire down the road, do a little bit of damage to both groups, not serious damage, and we have now seen uh, shots fired. And they are now firing uncontrolled volleys. They had no choice in that matter. They don't have the ability to fire controlled volleys. And they use their second action to reload a blue flag and a two. Two is Lieutenant Victor Perot. He's a leader status three. He's of the fourth Leger Voltigera skirmishers. They're the ones coming down the road that just received fire. He is a two, so he can activate both units, or he can activate one unit and try to deal with some of that shock. I think we're going to let the sergeant deal with that. They have to use two actions to try to climb the wall. They roll two dice, they'll subtract the lower, they get to move five inches. This guy will run out of the way.
Uh, now that was the two actions, but they, because they are light infantry, they get a free movement, so they're going to go ahead and move a second time. This is just a normal d6. It's again five. That'll easily get most of them up to the wall. Okay, and that was the other action will be for running down the road. Use the free action to move forward. Uh, that's not good. They do not like the command. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the last two dice to move forward. I didn't move at all with that one. And then I move four. So the Leger move up. They're hesitant. They're not moving quickly. And I do not like the fact that there is no cover there. This card we get is another red. It's a red flag. Another red flag. That's two red flags. Red would be the Spanish. A blue flag. That's three flags in a row. So we roll on the special events table based on the last movement. Uh, in this particular case, it was a movement, not a firing. So it's going to be a moving random event, and it's going to affect the French. I roll a four. Four is make way the leader commanding the group or formation which moved is accidentally barged down by his men. On the next activation, he cannot move or uses initiatives and will simply dust himself down and straighten his cravat. In a narrow alley, two inches or wide, he cannot be passed by any friendly troops. No, they got plenty of room, but he's knocked down. I'm going to lay him down to remind me of that. That's going to hurt the French a little bit because he really needs to do some reducing of shock for that unit. And the next card we get is the French main commander, one. There's two flags. He could choose to use those if he wants. Uh, he is coming up the road to the rear. We use two dice for movement. We'll take the two activations for movement. Uh, so they're going to move nine. coming up on the flank here behind this little mound to flank the taberna. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and use those two French flags to do an extra d6 of movement. They cannot change formation, which I actually kind of would like to do, but they can march a little further and that'll get them into the position. So I've rolled a three. That's not a whole lot further. See, I need to go from column in the line. Red two. That is the other squad of the Spanish. And they're going to show up right here on the firing step in the Hacienda. This timing is not particularly good for the French trying to get into position across the way. I can't get them all in here, so we won't. We'll leave a couple of people here to fill in as casualties are taken. That is his lieutenant. He's only a one. So they cannot move or anything, but they don't need to. They're going to fire. There's six of them. They are now in a much better position. Muskets, uh, 12 inches. This counts as close range. So close ranges are fours to sixes. Uh, I have six dice here. I get an extra dice for their leader's status. I'm going to go ahead and use those two reds to give two more. Close fires, I need fours through sixes to hit. That is not too bad. They have five hits to roll. It's all just the one unit. That's rough. That's three more shock on them. They're at five shock. We're going to see the difference when the French start firing because they're more disciplined troops than these, uh, these Spanish militia. Another flag and five. Five is, five is the French artillery. Uh, I'm not sure I'm ready for the French artillery yet. It's, right now its shots are going to be blocked anyway because it's going to have to either come in on the road or on the other side there within so many inches of those patrol markers. So I'm going to hold off on five, four. Forward is Sergeant Pierre Denis. He's the uh, sergeant, a status one, who's marching with the main force way over on the side over here 
Uh, he could fix morale and things like that, but there's none. They haven't suffered any morale over there yet. A red flag, and that's the end of the turn. Don't have anyone I haven't operated that are on the board. The blue flag and the red flag are lost. Uh, that ends our turn. A blue flag. Another blue flag, two blue flags, but I don't have, I have a five. Um, five is going to be that same lieutenant, nothing to do over there, and a red flag. That five disrupted that from being a special event. The main command, they could fire again, but now, there's, now they have a choice of targets. Things are getting a little tougher for them. Captain Liam Dunn in this building now has two targets. He has the main force approaching from that side. He has... The skirmishers coming up from the front. These guys are going to be a bigger threat. Right now they have the cover of the hills. I think the thing to do right now is to combine fire and take, try to take these guys out one more time. He's got uh, nine people firing on the bottom. That's the one group. I'll go ahead and use the flag for them as well. And they are just in close range. Four fives or sixes to hit. You get four hits, that's not terrific. Uh, they're in the open. One of them is dead. That's one dead, two more shock. But one of the Legere has been dropped, he's dead. And they're starting to get beat up a little over there. That, that was good. Top, this one I'm gonna give the plus two for the commanding officer. Uh, again, they need uh, fives or sixes to hit. Uh, I think it's four fives or sixes, actually. That's four hits. Two of those are nothing. Three of those are nothing. One more. Or they're at five. They're almost pinned. So they're going to have to do something about that morale, which they cannot do this turn because they're not going to be able to activate the big guy because of that special event last turn. The next activation is number four. That is uh, Denny again. Again, Denny has nothing to do over there. Not yet, he will. It's the nature of this game. Second blue flag, command card. And then it is a blue one. This is the commanding officer of the French. He's gonna go ahead and start putting them in a the line. We're gonna use the form up and move. So the form up doesn't cost anything, and that's going to put the first two All right, so there's our line. The fourth legier line forms into a line behind the hill and are ready to present. And I'm going to put them at present. They're ready to fire a dangerous volley into that building in their next activation. Got a uh, red two. Spanish in the Hacienda. There's six of them there. They're going to fire down into uh, our pals there. This is close range again. So four fives at sixes. Wow. Only one misses. Two of those are kills, and three of them are shock. Uh, so their shock, they've just gotten to eight. That's going to cause them some problems here. I have to roll for the chance that uh, the commander's just been hit. He has not, uh, but two other men have. It's not a commander, he's only a lieutenant. But two of the others have been hit. When you have more shock than men, which they now have, you have to do an involuntary withdrawal. Uh, these men are uh, skirmishers. It's two times, it's, it's six inches. They're gonna fall back six inches. They never even get to the wall. They fall back involuntarily six inches. That's rough for them and the Spanish reload. Got another red flag, Spanish flag, that won't be useful for anything now. Two Spanish flags, again, uh, the Spanish have all 
activated, so unless I get, and it's the end of the turn. And it's a diff. Uh, Spanish too. It's the guys on the wall that are doing so well. They're going to go ahead and fire again. This time it is at effective range. So they need fives or sixes. Wow. Again, only one miss. These guys are wreaking havoc. Now I don't think those people have cover at all. They've fallen back enough. Should have been a uh, bad things happens roll for when they fell back. They're counting into the open. Ones and twos will do nothing. That one, two, two do nothing. That's going to be another kill. And so two more shock and a kill. They're negative 10. They now have one, two, three, four people. So that's six more. Six times three, uh, 18. They're going to fall back 18 inches. They're practically off the board. They're real close to being off the board. They've been forced to withdraw twice, so that is now two force morale rolls. Uh, the first one, we get three, no effect. The second one is a five. Uh, so the uh, French have dropped from nine to eight for, uh, in their force morale roll there. Morale already weaker than the Spanish has begun. It was shaken by having those men turned. and. Uh, that group reloads. Still firing out of control. A blue command card. A blue five. Uh, that's a Danny. He's nothing to do. Uh, a red flag for command card. A Spanish command card. And a blue command card. That's two in a row. There's two blues out there. Three. That's three in a row. The last action was a firing. So this time we're going to roll for the Spanish group under Lieutenant Lopez. Uh, they, uh, it's going to be a random firing effect. These are never good. Uh, random firing effect. We roll 2d12. We get uh, eight. Three rounds of bloody minute. The unit immediately takes one additional firing related action. Firing, loading, or presenting. Wow. We're going to end up Unloaded, unfortunately, but they're going to go ahead now and fire at the other. Those guys are closer. So they're in uh, close range. They need four fives and sixes. All but one hit. Uh, I'm going to call those guys open. I think I just nothing else I can do. That's a miss. Three shocks and one kill. So eight. And one of them is down. They are now going to be forced to pull back. They're going to fall back 12. That is another bad things happen. Four, that is. So they drop another point. But that does leave our guys presently unloaded. Blue four. It's not as Danny. Another blue flag. There's three blue flags out there. We need one flag to fire a volley, controlled volley, into the house. Now they're activating on their own initiative. They're not going to get his pluses to this hit. So we're going to go ahead and fire at his first fire. Effective range means that I need uh, fives or six normally. First volley makes it four fives and sixes. We have 12 hits. I'm going to do six on six. Six upstairs, six downstairs. Six downstairs. Some of these are in light. The ones all do nothing. There's three ones, but there's two fours and a five. So three shock on the guys down below stairs and one shock on the guys upstairs. That's not so bad. And they reload. Blue two. And that is Perot, who finally stands up. He really needs to help deal with morale, though, which he can't. One. That's our, our main commander. He's going to fire again into that house. Again, we can't do a crushing valley, unfortunately. 
but we're going to eventually whittle that house down. It is still controlled folly, so that's going to make it four, five, or six. So I guess that would be present and fire. So they're going to be unloaded. 14 hits this time. We're going to do seven on the guys downstairs. That's going to be three more shock. And upstairs, two more shock. So things are getting a little rough in that building. They're unloaded. There we have a red flag, Spanish flag. Another Spanish flag, two, two Spanish flags, and the backup Spanish commander. I'm not sure he has a target anymore. Uh, they're gonna have to reload. Go ahead and start moving. Barbier. Four. Four is Dany, nothing to do over there. French flag. Another French flag. And Tiffin. And the first is a blue flag, a uh, French flag. Uh, and Tiffin. We could, we could reload. Do an un, uh, unordered reload of the French. All that can operate action, take action. Technically, the last thing that happened was a reloading here. I'm going to call it a firing action. Uh, so we'll go ahead and do a random event based on their firing action. And we get a four. Damp squib, powder's damp. Unit will fire at half effect until fresh powder can be found or collected from an ammunition. That hurts. That's really good for the Spanish blue flag. Spanish flag. Cannon. Damn, cannons have to be directly in place with that DP. That's going to be a problem because it's so far back without line of fire. Uh, but we'll have to roll it forward, I think. That's all. It's going to show up here. So we have a cannon is deployed right there. People are running off the field. Things are rough over, over there. Uh, another red flag. Blue flag. The French are going to go ahead and fire. They're at half effect. This is the main body under the command of Colbert. They're only going to be firing 12 because of their damp powder. I do not have an ammunition wagon. On the other hand, they can add his three dice. We're using all four of the blues, so we can't do the crushing volley, unfortunately, because this is, but he's going to get two turns of what's going to happen. So they're going to uh, present and fire. Uh, they are at effective range, except that that makes it four, fives, and six because of the presenting. Poor powder is really hurting. All right, so they have four and three. We're going to do four on the guys in light cover downstairs. Three of the guys in light cover are dead. Wow. And then the other three rounds are going to the guys in heavy cover. One of them is dead and a shock. We have three rounds going into, uh, well, the commander's upstairs, so he's gonna, he's gonna have to roll three under. He's okay. I'm going to take one of the guys off the steps here because that just makes the most sense to me. They were kind of exposed. Same thing with these guys outside. And that was out of turn. So for Lucky, he'll get an actual card and be able to do that again. If, if the French. And are they lucky? They're perfectly lucky. That's his card. Uh, he'll give them their commands. Uh, the first action will be to reload, and the second will be to present. They can't actually fire again. But they will be ready for the next turnaround because they are now presented. And the next card is the Spanish in that building. He's got stuff he's got to do. He's only a two, uh, so he cannot activate both of these. Well, he can either activate both these groups or he can deal with shock. Yeah, he's going to rally off shock down on them 
and the upstairs guys are going to fire and load on controlled volleys. Uh, six guys, they're firing a huge body of people there. Oh, really? Yeah, they need fives or sixes. One of those hit. It's in a group and it does nothing. Four red flags though. We're gonna go ahead and use those red flags. The red flags allow you to activate an officer who's already activated. And I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna activate that same guy again. Uh, so again, I'm gonna rally a shock on that group down below because they're beat up. And I'm gonna fire the guys up, up on top. In this case, it was glad I didn't use those red flags to increase the other shot because it would have just hurt this. All right, two hits, not much. One in the front group, one in the back. I hit nothing on one and the other. They're an open, that's one shock. That's not great. A tiffin, that's the end of the turn. I don't have anything else to activate. All the flags have been played. Keep getting tiffins. Red command card, tiffin. Uh, that means one Spaniard so we're going to go ahead and fire. It'll be the group on top there again, because why not? Why wouldn't it be? One hit. The group in the center there, nothing. That was probably not worth it. Blue flag, and a French command flag. French command flag. Spanish command flag, three command flags in a row. On what that's going to mean, though, is it's going to be a random firing event on the unit, the Spanish unit, in the upstairs of the taverna. Uh, I rolled an eight, three rounds of bloody minute. Unit immediately takes one additional firing-related action, firing, loading, or presenting. Well, that's good. Uh, that means they actually managed to load real quickly. That'll help them for that last turn. I got a Spanish flag. a French flag, uh, the Barbary, but Barbary is holding up, and Tiffin. Red flags and Spanish flags to operate the guy still on the table. The first one I do is the, uh, going to present and fire the French. Uh, they're gonna need four, fives, or sixes. All right, they got three and two. We're gonna do three on the guys in the open down below stairs, one dead and one shock. Still. That's gonna bring them to five shock. It's gonna take one of the guys out of there, doing better. I haven't been deducting for the shock on the shooting, which I really should be. Because the Spanish shooting should be losing its effectiveness drastically. Uh, and the upstairs guys, that's two. One of them is dead. That was the French. Ben didn't respond up there. They now can. Six dice, but there's four shock. So you divide that by two, that's gonna be two. So it's gonna be only four dice because of their shock. That's one hit. That center unit again, and it's nothing. Uh, then the, that's the uh, Spanish, then the French will. They could retreat. Nine inches, I can move. Nine inches, but I have to subtract eight, so it's one inch. <laughs> one inch, that may be enough. Uh, all I'm really trying to do here uh, is get these guys out of the road. Mostly because I'm trying to get that cannon forward. The other Spanish are gonna shoot. They're gonna shoot at that unit. Even if I can, I can, but it's long range. It's gonna be sixes. One hits, they're in the open, that's a shock. That's not what they wanted. That takes their shock down to nine, four over, uh, so that's 12, right on the end of the table. And then they reload. 
I have one flag left to use, and what we're going to do is we're going to start moving that cannon forward, I think. Or do we just shoot from there? Cannon is firing down the lane from over just between the street there. The Spanish troops guarding the wall just here. This is a medium gun. Effective range is up to, wow, 20. Canister range is 24. This is canister range. I'm going to call that hard cover, though. We're going to fire this cannon. This is canister range. It's going to be called effective range. And it's going to do double shock. 12 dice, fives or sixes to hit. Not great. I only got four hits. Uh, four hits in heavy. And those are nothing. Boom, boom. So the cannon fires its first round, uh, but nothing actually happened. Wow. And now we're going to do another turn. It's Barbary, but Barbary is staying with his troops for a while, maybe for the rest of the game. I get a Spanish command card, a French command card. We have two, two French flags, or two flags in a row. And then we have four. Four is Denny. Denny actually has things to do right now. So Denny will use his one point to get rid of the shock on that unit. That's what his job is. He's uh, shouting out to the men and calming them down. Another French command flag. There's two of them now. Now there's three. Uh, they could interact. Take out a turn, that may be a wise move. I could take two activations to reload the gun. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna try to get four flags. And I did. Uh, unfortunately, that also means we just had three flags in a row. Uh, who fired last, the cannon? It was the cannon. That's not good. Uh, this is going to be a random firing event on the cannon. Seven, smoke. A pall of smoke hangs immediate in front of the fires. Firing through this will be a negative one to hit until the smoke clears on chapter end. Uh, chapter end is when uh, you have two tiffins that, uh, come up immediately. If the unit moves, the smoke remains where it was placed. So they could move past the smoke, but they have to reload. Uh, well, that in mind, they have to reload anyway, so why don't we just do that? What we're doing right now, the cannon is using its turn to reload. It are the four, four flags to reload. But there's smoke. The smoke is still in their way, so I'm going to move it up there to remind us of that. And we're going to go ahead and pull another card and see what happens. But the gun is reloaded and ready to go. And what happens is I get a French 2. That we needed. That's Perot, who's been running away. Uh, Perot is going to go ahead and reduce this by 2. That brings him to 7 but they're still over. I forgot to roll for them. They should have rolled when he fell back last turn and they failed. So they, the French morale is collapsing, actually. I mean, they're not in danger zone yet, but they're, they are only at six now. Remember, they started one point lower anyway. Uh, the best the Spanish can hope for is that they turn that morale before they get wiped out. And this is going to be the Spanish Lieutenant. He's going to go ahead and fire on the cannons that have been shooting at him. I think that's all he has a choice of. There's six of them. They're at long range. They got one hit. So we roll for uh, being in the open. That's a four. That is shock. So there is now a shock on the cannon. I should have used the flag for that, but I didn't. That too. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to use the flag and his command figures. They should have been two more shots. Uh, those were nothing. And then we have a five. Five is the cannon. Cannon can shoot. It'll be at a negative two, or we can move. I think that's what we want to do. I think we want to roll up out of that smoke. The smoke, remember, is actually right where the cannon is. It's not where the smoke is showing on the field. In fact, it's the cannon's smoke, really. So we roll a die. <laughs> we got a one because of the card there. Uh, they can only move. Uh, there's a negative one to their movement, so they're not actually going to go anywhere. Let's go ahead and do a second movement, though. That was a four that time. That'll give them three. We'll move them up to three. And that's going to bring them out of their smoke. It kind of means they wasted their cards earlier, but heck, it's better than 
Nothing. They're out of the smoke. They're ready to fire on their next turn. Red flag. That's the Spanish. And second Spanish red flag. Third red Spanish flag. The three flags in a row. The last thing was a movement, so it's going to be a random movement event on the cannon. You roll five. Uh, spinning feathers. The group in formation conducts all movement with a negative one per dice so they can quench their thirst with suitable liquid. Ignore it if you have a water bowser with your force. We do have a water bowser with our force. I've got three red flags and the Spanish main commander hasn't done anything yet. We're going to take off the um, shock on the guys at the bottom of the hill. Fire six at the others. The two for my leadership ability. Uh, this is uncontrolled at the mobs in front of us. They're in the open, but they're at long, just barely, or at effective, I mean. So those are two hits, fives and six, three hits. Not a great roll. So two at the first unit. A four and a five in the open, and two. Four and a five is shock. So the shock that came off of them is right back. They get two shock. Tiffin, end of the turn. Blue flag, blue command. The French have a command card out. Blue two, that's Perot. Perot has have practically left the table. He's way back here. He's in bad shape. I'm going to go ahead and use my two points to bring him down to five, which ends his shock issues. Uh, red five, that is the cannon. Cannon's going to return shot on those guys. Cannon fires again on here, manages to, to hit his target, but not do any damage. Uh, there's another Spanish flag, another French flag. That's the end of the turn. And red flag, Spanish flag, French flag. Three flags in a row. The last thing that happened was that cannon shot. Special event. Special shooting event. Four. Damn squib. Wow, the cannon is at half power. Uh, that is not bad. That's the kind of stuff the Spanish need. Another French flag and the French main commander. We're going to add those two dice and the three dice of the commander. Four on the guys downstairs. That's a dead. Another shock. And upstairs, a dead and another shock. All right. Those guys just broke. The guys upstairs are holding up already, but the guys downstairs are gonna run. There's only three of them left. They've got a five, so it's two. They moved six inches. The Spanish that had been in the Tarbonara have now started to flee. Two, that is Perot. Perot could start moving, but I think it'd be smarter to get this back a little bit lower before we go back into the field. So I'm gonna drop him back down to three. Now, five. That's the cannon. The cannon reloads. And then we have the Spanish commander. He's in the taberna here. Six. We're going to drop him down to five. Four dice. Plus two for the commanding officer. He's firing at the same big group, the main French group. Three hits. So two hits in the front line and one in the far right. So just one shock. Four. That's Danny. Danny's going to just take that shock I just put down on the main French force. He's just going to take that right back off. Spanish flag. That's three. We could act out of order. A French, and a, yeah, French flag. Three flags in a row. We've had an awful lot of special events in this game. The last thing was a special action on the the main French forces, they rolled seven, smoke. There's now smoke in front of them. There's also four reds, four Spanish. Use those red flags to fire from uh, Lopez's company at the cannon. One hit, so one shock. Uh, the advantage of that, though, is that he can fire and load he acted extra using the four flags, and the very next card is his own. So we're going to do that 
again he's gonna they're gonna fire and reload uh, this is better he's got six hits this time that is two shock and that is one more than they can take so they're going to retreat three inches and that is Tiffin main force and now shooting through that smoke but they can do that they're going to fire and reload they have a negative one so they're going to need sixes to hit they hit for three uh, saving throws one shock which they really didn't need blue flag Spanish uh, Spanish are going to go ahead and return that fire well, six should have been six guys shooting but they lose two dice for their shock and plus two for the boss they're negative uh, ones because of the smoke which is still there so they have one hit uh, one hit firing at that middle unit again at a shock red flag now I get a red flag I could have used that another red flag again could have used that blue four blue four is Danny Danny just takes that off two two is Perot uh, Perot is at three now he's gonna go ahead and lower that to two and let's go ahead and order them in forward. Or should I move them over there? All right, so Perot moves his troops around the, the back of the building there, the house there to where the other guys are. So he's getting ready to start doing some morale repair and start getting his lights back into the fight. Then we have a red flag. Three red flags and a Tiffin. But we're gonna go ahead and shoot at those retiring running cannon dudes. So they had a shot at the cannon crew. Unfortunately, they missed. They could have used a hit there because that cannon crew couldn't have taken it. Uh, blue one, that's gonna be the guys on the hill. They're gonna go ahead and fire. They're at half shots. This is gonna be really long now. Fire at the guys at the hills. They need sixes because of the smoke. But they got some, only three hits. And a bunch of fives, but and they do two shock. We're gonna clear that building soon. That's practically game changing if that happens. That's probably it. Blue flag. Tiffin. Two. That's gonna be our pals in the hacienda again. Firing once more at the cannoneers. There are six of them. This time they do have their buddy shooting. Three hits on the cannoneers. That's two shock. And then for their second action, they're gonna load. Oh, red flag. Could have used the red flag just then. Uh, six. Red six. Oh, that's. I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to rescue these guys over here. Tiffin, end of the turn. Uh, I could operate the. I'm gonna use the red. I'm going to try to get the guys holding that tab Nera to change their target. They're firing on control, so I have to roll for this. But I'm going to try to get them to change their location to the gun. I'm going to try to chase that gun off the table. To roll a five or a six to change their target, we do not. There's six of them firing. They're now at seven. That's a negative three, so that's only three firing plus two for the leader. And they're a negative one, so only one hits. That's why I wanted to change their target, is they're constantly only hitting for one. Uh, typically, they end up doing a, a shock, and then they can't take advantage of that shock before it gets repaired. That's going to cost them this game eventually. Uh, four. That's Denny, so that comes off again. That's exactly what I was referring to. One. We're going to try to do that again. We're going to try to get to the change. We don't. Four or five at them. That's two this time. Those hits are going to be two shock. Now we're starting to get somewhere. It's not a lot of shock, but now there's two on two different units. That's, that's going to be a little harder to deal with. Red flag. Red flag. 
blue flag, special effect. Uh, the last people that fired. The firing special effect for the Spanish who were in the Tabernera. Uh, they rolled a six. We're beating them, boys. Unit is inspired by their firing. We move one point of shock from all groups that fired. Well, it's only the one group, but still he can, any getting rid of shock is good right now. Second blue flag. Third blue flag, that's a special effect. Same freaking group, because nothing's help happened. Uh, four, special random firing events. Damn squib, oh great, now their ammunition is at half. And one. All right, one's gonna fire into that building. They're gonna use all three of those to fire a crushing volley, which will double any shock it causes. They've only got the 12 guys. They're gonna lose one die because of shock. They're gonna get three dice because of the boss guy. They're gonna need sixes because of the smoke. They only got two hits. It would have been a bunch more if it wasn't for that smoke. That's nothing. Red flag. There's three Spanish red flags. Four Spanish red flags. I'm gonna go ahead and fire at the artillery with these guys. There are six of them plus the commander. It's only one hit. But he gets to fire again. This is going to be fire and load again. This time it's two hits. That is only another shock. They're in dangerous zones, but they're not out yet. And it is Perot. Parrot is status two. He can activate both units. I think I'm going to activate his six and use the other one to reduce the uh, shock by one that's on that other six unit. But the first group, his, the group he's in direct command of, is going to move. They are light infantry, so they get to move an extra. So they're going to use two activations to move and then use their extra, so they've got eight inches. Uh, they are at present, though, still at a two. So they're still down by four. They still have a little bit of uh, shock on them, but they're in better shape. That other six, they're, uh, they're still a mess. But we're gonna start seeing these people come back. We gotta be close to the end of this turn. Uh, we got a blue flag. That is the only flag that is unplayed on the table right now. We've gone through almost every card, and that is Barbier. Barbier is gonna stick where he's been sticking uh, for at least another turn. And Tiffin, that's the end of the turn. We have a uh, Spanish flag. I have a blue flag, French flag, and then I have a French one. That is the main unit. I'm going to go ahead and activate them. I think it's time to do something on that front. Colbert's command, the main forces, they're over on the far side there. They're behind that cotton balls on the hill or that fog. That's part of why I'm moving them, is they're behind a smoke cloud, which is blocking their vision and affecting their musketry. They also have that squ damn squib special event, so they're at half their die rolls anyway. So uh, they've got to do something to shake things up. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start advancing on the Spanish and the Taberna. The Taberna, you can't see in the, the shot right now, but it's just out of the shot here behind this tower. They're firing on control. I have to deal with that first. And we fail. So he cannot move forward. They're going to continue shooting. So they need sixes because of the smoke. They've got some, uh, but that smoke's really hurting. That's four hits. We roll those. We got two kills and two shock. That may be enough anyway, because they're now at eight shock, and they've taken two kills. Six, yep, that's what it took. They are two over. They're gonna start retreating out of the building. Six inches. That is the worst thing probably that could have happened for the Spanish. Uh, I thought I was going to need to do a charge to do that, but it turns out it's not necessary. Use the blue flag. I should have had four more dice there. 
That's one more hit. That's another dead. And another dead means another three inches. This unit goes to 12. That's way worse than what they're at. They're going to skedaddle far. They go 2d6 plus 6. That's only 9. That's not so bad. Splash, splash, splash through the water. Um, that's a forced withdrawal. Actually, that's a break. Break is worse than a forced withdrawal. Uh, that is two points. One, two. They are catching up. They're staying right behind the French. These guys I'm going to give light cover because of the bridge. And that's going to be important to them. But they still take a shock. They are at 12, 5. So that's um, 21 inches. They are gone. This time they actually have run off the board. For them, all right, things are going bad. They're down to three now. They're, they are losing. Uh, that takes two of their cards out of the, out of the pack. And they're leaving the table. Red flag. Can't do much with that. Five is a cannon. They're gone. Red is the guy that just ran off the table. There's only one left. It's going to be a tiffin. Yep. So that was a dramatic turn. The Spanish are in full retreat. Only one body is still holding the invincible extras. The two, the two uh, outpost troops that were actually part of the game have run. Uh, are almost off the table, and they may actually legitimately be. This is certainly turning into a French victory. And we have a French flag. And Tiffin. Uh, so the French can move. I'm going to go ahead and move Parrots, guys. Seven inches. All that's happened in this particular turn is Parrot has moved forward to start taking the works here opposite the Spanish and the Hacienda. They're right about where they were when they got repelled early in the, in the fight. Blue flag. Red flag. Red flag. That's three flags in a row. Last thing that happened was a move. It was Parrot Skies. So we will roll on the special movement rate. Seven. Tell the men to sing, Sergeant. If the troops are in, a, in an any column formation, they may take 2d6. Uh, they are not in any kind of any column. Tiffin, end of the turn. Uh, the Spanish have two reds, so they can go first. It may be time for them to start getting out of here. I think what the Spanish want to do is start pulling out. So they'll start six. They held as best they could, but right now they're just going to run the risk of causing more morale problems. That is Perot. Blue flag. And a one. Go ahead and order the main troops again. Oh, they fired, so they're uncontrolled. So he's going to have to try to control them. He does not but they can still fire, and they will. And they're going to fire eight rounds at those last three guys crossing that river. Uh, they get plus three dice for the boss. They only got one hit. It was a bunch of fours, but morale, which may be enough. Because that puts them at 13 which is 10 more than they can handle. And that's going to be 30 inches running off the board. So they actually leave. They also, they're not only broken, but they've left the table. Oh, routes from the table. The second, there should have been a roll for the leader rolling from the table, the Spanish leader. That was a turn ago, and I rolled a five. That might have ended the game right there. That's a negative two points, one, two. Is break, so we roll for the group that just moved. They can't afford anything. Uh, two. 
That's one point. That is game. The Spanish have collapsed, and the French have proven victorious. Not a surprise there. The surprise is that it took so long. The Spanish managed to hold up as well as they did. Now, I'm going to go through really quickly and do what this uh, end results of this means. Now, this game actually should have ended when only two groups ended. So that was a while ago. When that first group collapsed and got off the table, it should have ended. I can voluntary withdrawal at that point. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna call this a voluntary withdrawal. Once that one element fled the table, the other two were already fleeing. I was trying to get off the table, so the game would have ended there. That's gonna be a benefit. A voluntary withdrawal is better than an involuntary. So force morale difference. It is four to zero. So a difference of four. Uh, French maintain the initiative. They gain two sacks of supplies from the enemy. Winter, the exploring officer for the British, happened to witness this fight and rode back uh, at the end of it. So Garrett now knows uh, that this battle has occurred. He also knows about the presence of the French agent, Simon Barber. They don't know exactly what his, his goal is or what his attempts are, but they know that he's there. They know that he's obviously up to no good. So Garrett has ordered a forced march. What this means, it allows them to move two squares and they have to leave their baggage train behind. So they will go into this next fight without their water bowser and they won't have the ability to take their wounded with them. I hope you've enjoyed this after action report. It's been a while since I've played the game. I made a couple mistakes. Some of those I'm gonna fix in editing. Some of them I won't. Some of them I probably didn't even catch. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask those in the comments down below. Also, if you have any comments, if you play the game and you just want to make some comments about your thoughts on the game, go ahead and put those in the comment section down below as well. We also look to the comments for any ideas for any further content that you would like to see us present here on Cry Havoc Wargaming. If you've enjoyed this video, if you found it at all useful, I hope that you will hit like. And if you'd like to continue to receive notifications of videos like this one that may help you better decide how to spend your money or time in your tabletop or gaming hobby, then I hope you'll hit subscribe and ring our notification bell. Until next time, cheers.